Please be seated. Or you can stand if you want. In the name of our Creator, the Son, our Savior and Redeemer, and the Triune Spirit, who's always with us. I think we need to look at what's going on in Jesus' life and the community, and what Matthew is trying to do. We're now getting towards the end of the Gospel of Matthew. Matthew's talking to his community and Jesus is talking to his. The followers had many questions to ask. And they asked this, tell us, when will this be? When will be the sign of the coming of the age? But my brothers and sisters, one thing is certain, according to Jesus, is that the Son of Man will come again. In my theology class, I had to question that, that the Son of Man will come again. I asked my professor, will it be Jesus? Would it be God? Or could it be somebody among us trying to lead this world back into the relationship of the one true God? And do you know what? I couldn't get an answer. I couldn't, because it's up to each individual one of us to search and find. But in what Jesus was saying, all the nations are gathered before the Son of Man, before Jesus. Matthew is telling you and I, creation will be judged. And you and I are blessed because we are followers of the Son of God, the true uh, God. And Jesus is saying to us, you and I, very clearly that we will be judged, but our judgment will be righteous by God. In Matthew 20, 28, the Son of Man came not to serve, but to serve us. So in the final judgment, it is clear that Jesus is demanding nothing for himself. Jesus expects you and I to serve him by serving the least of these. My brothers and sisters, this teaching is fitting conclusion, not only to the discourse of the end of age, but to all of Jesus' teachings that Matthew has recorded in his gospel. But one of the things to me in Matthew's gospel, there is a definition that comes up time and time again. And when I started to learn or relearn English, I could never understand what it meant. Righteousness. Righteousness. What does it mean? In trying to learn the English language, I used to cut the words up to, to see if they made sense. So you've got right, s, ness. Just think, what does it mean to you? What does righteousness, or does it just go over your head? Matthew, was so important to him and his congregation in his community. Righteousness. Jesus came to give us righteousness in relationship with the one true God. That's what it meant to me. It helps me to connect. No, I didn't Google the word. But Jesus said on the Sermon of the Mount, Unless your righteousness exceeds that of scribes and Pharisees, 
you will never get to heaven. So that's how important that word is for you and I. Are we righteous? Or are we too righteous? Are we so righteous that we don't see anything in front of us? It clouds our vision, it clouds our mind because we want to be so pure before we go to heaven. But it is clear that righteousness is not about the letter of the law, but about the spirit or the true intent of the law and understanding. But in our final judgment, those who are right are on the right hand of the Son of Man are called righteous. So you better think yourself as a righteous person. Not because of their superior knowledge of the Torah or their exceptional spiritual gifts that they call, are called righteous. Rather, it's God's grace. It is the mercy and compassion that we, you and I, show to the hungry, the thirsty, the stranger, the naked, and the sick, and above all, the imprisoned. In Matthew's Gospel, Jesus tells you and I, time and time again, truly I tell you, just as you did to one of these beasts who are members of my family, you did to me. Matthew goes on in the reading of his Gospel, that they who reject the Son of Man are to be sent to eternal punishment. Me, being a good Roman Catholic, being brought up a good Roman Catholic, and uh, I was always told I'd be a good stoker of the fire. So I know where I was going. But I have grown up to understand that that's not quite correct. In my own personal theology, I don't believe Jesus wrote that. I, I have sometimes difficulty with, their, with translations in that I don't see any difference between a loving, graceful God and a loving, graceful Son. It's, to me, inherent from one to the other. But in Matthew's Gospel, I believe our God is loving and God's grace is for all creation, regardless, it's for all creation. Matthew is talking to his community about the kingdom. Is that description right? Kingdom? And a throne up here somewhere? Is that... Is that how you perceive? What about the spirit that's in us? How about that? Is that not our kingdom? The kingdom that God gave us in birth? I believe the kingdom is an inherent gift, not something earned. Moreover, the righteousness are aware of what they have done. What did the gospel say this morning? Lord, when did we see you hungry? They had not been acted in some calculated way to earn God's favor. They have simply been doing what comes naturally for them in caring for their neighbors in need. Their actions are a sign of strong relationship with a loving and merciful God. As Jesus has said, I came to serve, not to be served. But what about those who did not listen to Jesus and are left surprised to learn that they encountered him in the lowly and the needy and the poor? They too have simply been doing what comes naturally. It's in our genes. 
looking out for their own. Look at the world today through this pandemic that we're going through. Look at the selfishness of nations. It's right in front of us. In my country of Canada, one of the good things that has come out of it, if it is good, there's more people observing church today than there has ever been. Whether they come back or not is another thing. But at least they know to go to the right place at the time when it's needed. That is the important thing. They simply, they, they need, people need to do those things that they feel strong about. Their actions are a sign of a strong relationship that we need to build to our loving and merciful God. As Jesus said, I came to serve, not to serve, not to be served. But those who are going to be cast away, they were simply doing what they felt they needed to do without any relationship to the one true God. That God does not exist in their minds. They do not understand why Jesus is with them to help them. But my brothers and sisters, what is Matthew trying to tell you and I and uh, in what Jesus is telling his followers? Not too long, many, just a few months, we will be listening to the passion story about the beginning. About the beginning of what? In the passion story of suffering. As Jesus said, I have come to serve and I will serve and I am prepared to die so that you understand that I will serve. He will serve the outcast. He served the sick. We know that it's all recorded. Was Jesus righteous? You bet he was. You bet he was. There are many times in the life of clergy when we won't talk about judgment. But the Bible says in Matthew, there will be judgment. But what is judgment? And who's going to judge us? That's between you and, and God, I believe. That's between you and God. What do you call it? Conscious? <laughs> some people have, some people don't. But I believe that is the time of judgment. But the parable of sheep and goats can be difficult to preach for those who are very conscious of judgment. As you probably know and have had in your past experience with other denominations, they really come hard on people to judge. Should we be judged? Should we be judged? Have you ever thought about it? Should we be judged? Darn right we should be judged. If we are God's creation, then we have a responsibility here, like Jesus, to serve others. If we haven't served others, then we haven't followed Jesus. So we have that right to be judged. But because of God's everlasting grace for us, and are building that relationship, that spiritual relationship with the one true God. My brothers and sisters, don't worry. Because the gates will be pearly for us and not stoking coal in heaven in, in below. God does care for us. I believe God cares for our creation. And I believe very strongly in my faith, that we are the followers of his son. To judge 
or to be judged, you and I make confession every Sunday when we say our creeds. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. This is good news for all victims of injustice, for all who hunger and thirst for righteousness. And as we pray today and every day, the triune spirit is always with us, with you and I, by God's grace.